learners of class 11 welcome to the wonderful world of english language classroom learners this is the part 2 of the first lesson class 11 english kuswan sings the portrait of a lady learners in the first part we have seen the text read understood and interpreted the text we have done many activities and at last we did some true or false uh, typology of question then multiple choice questions and learners will continue in this we will do some vocabulary and some grammar based on the text read come on okay. with me is yukta so we will everyone i'm so glad to be here again Fine. and Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Yukta. You did all the activities, and we hope and believe that learners, you also have done it. So, let me uh, take you to uh, the objectives of this lesson, learners. Objectives of this lesson. L uh, let's know it. Okay. At the end of this lesson, you learners will be able to interpret and analyze the text read shortly with one activity. Then. We will deduce the meaning of the words from the text and use them in context. Then we also will learn how Kuswan Singh uses past perfect tense forms to, to denote the past actions to report the past actions distance past. So, okay. we will learn past perfect tense. Okay. Come on, Yukta, uh, you must have uh, uh, enjoyed the story doing the story in uh, Very uh, much. Th this Very one. Much. Kusan Singh's uh, the portrait of a lady is yes. grandmother. So, I am going to ask you three things. You will have to say it in two, three sentences shortly, quickly. So, how will you describe the grandmother? Okay. The Not the way he has done it, he has described it fine. Kuswan Singh, okay. how do you describe what kind of lady, what kind of relationship? Come on. Okay. So, according to me, uh, the grandmother is basically a very traditional woman, a typical Indian woman. She was very close with her grandson. She used to prepare him for go to school and uh, recite prayers to him. So this shows that how religious and how caring she was uh, towards her grandson. Also their friendship, friendship uh, has been into some different stages in life, but still she managed to keep her keep up with her grandson and she did not got too emotional. Fine, fine. And she was also very uh, objective, no? Very yes, very, very objective. And, and he never was very, uh, not highly emotional or yes. this one, no? That was one thing. Then now, second thing, describe Kushwan Singh as a boy and as you grew, grew up into an adult, goes abroad and comes back. Okay. All, all is, what was what was he? Describe him. Okay, so I think Kushman Singh has always loved his grandmother a lot and he has always obeyed her directions and instructions to uh, recite prayer, though he never learned them by heart, but uh, he followed her through the journeys of life. I think. Fine. And he is uh, uh, again a modern Indian yes, who, a modern wants, Indian. Who, who had great dreams go abroad and so, yes. but he never denied or rejected the grandmother's role in his life. Yes, he always respected his grandmother. Fine. Yes. Now, say something about the relationship, the friendship between the grandmother and the narrator, Kushwan Singh. Okay. So, the relationship, the bond between them was very special. In the childhood mainly, when Kushwan Singh was a child and they used to spend so much time together, but uh, when he grew up, he started going to college and then went to university. Then their bond became a little slight, you know, low, lower than before. And then after that, hmm. they were not in such contact bond. at all. Yes. But Kuswan Singh recognizes that even, even though the grandmother was not talking to him, he says that our relationship got snapped. Yes. But even then, it continues. Yeah. Even that that's the typical Indian way of yeah. uh, create, uh, you know the grand uh, the fam family uh, familial bond and relationship. They both respected each other. The grandmother used to spend her alone time, and then the Kushman Singh used to study abroad. So it was you know a respect. Fine, fine. Yeah. Le learners and Yukta, you must have noticed 
the same relationship, same friendship in our households, every household, okay. in our neighborhood, even the uh, old people in the neighborhood would look at the neighbors, others' children and grandchildren with compassion, tell them and very, very interesting uh, the bond of the familial life. That is yeah. one of the merits of uh, Indian way, Indian culture, Indian way of living. So, let us also um, realize through this story the importance of it. This okay. is one. We will, I will give you uh, at the end a, a writing task based on this. Now, let us move on to learn some vocabulary which Kuswan Singh uses in his writing. Okay. So, we, we discussed it in the first part. Come on, let us also take it up again. So, here are some sentences from the story. Number one, her fingers were busy telling the mm -hmm. beads of her rosary. We, 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 we discussed it. What is telling? In the banks, teller is there yes. who, who counts the money and gives it. It means counting, uh, mm, counting. Uh, counting the beads. Uh, beads. So, her, her fingers were busy telling the beads of her rosary means counting. Counting the beads. Look at the second sentence using the same word tell. I would tell her English words and little things of western signs were taught. Okay. So, what is the tell here? I would tell her that I was taught mathematics and science in my school. He was letting her know okay. something. Yeah, making someone know something. Yes. So, first telling is, tell the is counting. Uh, counting, second one. Third one, at, at her age one could never tell. That means one could never be sure. Yes, yes. one could never be sure. So, at this age, at this time I could never tell this is true. Yes. So, sometimes sure. we say, uh, yeah, not sure. Okay. Yeah. Then she told us that her end was near. So, now here tell, told, what does it mean? It is, she is informing, informing everybody. So, yeah. learners, the same word could be used different connotations and denotation, mean figurative meaning and real meaning. Here all of them are real meaning, telling the, mean uh, counting, uh, I would inform, I would tell someone make someone know and uh, at her age one could never tell at this time one could never tell never be sure uh, never be sure yes then telling also informing come on the same way kuswan singh uses some more uh, uh, words and phrases number 1 look at these sentences to take to something he says she was taken ill yes then take ill Take to something is to begin to do something as a habit. He took to drinking yes. as a result of his failure. It became a habit. Mm. He took to riding on bicycle every day as a habit. Mm. So, Kuswan Singh says the next day he was, she was taken ill. We do not take illness deliberately, but this is a usage in English mm -hmm. took ill. Look at that take to take to something, take on something. So, like that the word verb gets its greater meaning adding some preposition or adverb some other thing. Okay. So, that we call it phrasal verbs. Okay. So, the example Kuswan Singh gives is to take to something. He has taken to playing cricket as a habit yes. in order to escape from his other, other, habits. other habits. So, the grandmother took ill, she fallen sick. Yes. Okay, learners, let me take up the word now take again and put the prepositions or some other, other words in order to make them phrasal verb. I am going to give you, uh, I was just looking at it, uh, Yukta, I found okay. take can form 16 or 15 phrasal verbs. Oh. Come on, it, it is there on your screen. Let us let us look at it. Take a back, take after, take apart, take away, take for, take in, take off, take on, take over, take through, take to, we have seen that, yeah. take up. So, learners phrasal verbs are formed 
an addition of mostly preposition and sometimes others also. I am going to uh, give some examples of uh, this take phrasal verb. Uh, look at the sentence which appears on your screen. You are going to make sentences on your own. Take okay. take a back. Yukta was taken aback by the news. What does it mean? Yukta was surprised by and, the news. Uh, yeah, shocked by shocked the, sometimes. By sometimes the news. shocked. Yeah. So, learners, mix your own sentences. Use. I am not going to give any activity. You make your own sentences. Take a back. Taken a back. Can you formulate another sentence? Okay. I was taken a back when I saw my mom. Fine. And you are doing something else, okay? Yes. Got redundant, probably. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Take after. She looks like her aunt. She takes after her aunt. Meaning, what does it mean? Sometimes you say, you, you look like you are a uh, younger elder sister or you look like your uh, grandmother. So, okay. that we say, English, it is also said, she takes after her grandmother. Okay, to so look on, like someone. Uh, look like someone. Yeah. Yeah, particularly in the family. Okay. Come on, say, formulate a sentence. I take after my father. A father. You yes. look like your father. Fine. Yes. Good, good thing. Your father would be very happy to <laughs> learn that. Fine. Take a pot. Let me give an example, then you will have to supply another example, another sentence. Okay. The press persons, the press persons took the leader apart by asking difficult questions. Sometimes, you know, you put people into difficult situations. Come on, I am saying the exa uh, one, one illustration, you will have to supply another. The press person took the leader apart by asking difficult questions. Come on, go ahead. So, it can be? You know, sometimes you put embarrassing questions, difficult questions, then the person is taken apart. <laughs> so, 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 uh, sometimes you know, uh, when people, uh, children are uh, caught, you ask them some questions, they would not say answer. This is one. For the adults, we ask some embarrassing questions, so then they are taken apart. Or like, put, mm. I took the teacher apart by asking her personal questions. Fine, all right. So, that is fine. Then, take away. Take away, there are two meanings. I am going to give you two sentences. Uh, you have to make at least one sentence anyway. Okay. What is the take away from this class? Learners watching everywhere and you also say, so what is the take away for me from this class? The other one, they have taken away my important papers, physically okay. taken away. Yes. The first one is something else, come on. What is the take away from this? And yes. nowadays, you know, if you they, in the restaurant, they will say take away or dining, they yes. will ask. That is also, so take away restaurants. Yeah, physically, when we take away something, mm. physically. So, another take away, make a sentence. So, what is the take away from this class would mean, what did I understand from what, this what class? Did I, what, did I, what did I learn? What have I learned? Yes. So, so, what is the takeaway from the Prime Minister's statement? What is the takeaway from uh, the particular happening around the world? Yes. Okay. Take over. Shrill has taken over as the chairperson from Karan. So, okay. you take over, take charge of it. So, oh. come on, make a statement. Can you repeat this one, please? Okay. Take over. Shrill has taken over as the chairperson of the company from Karan. Okay. Hmm. Uh, Inherited something or inherited or uh, take take charge of it, not necessarily inherited. Okay. Suppose, uh, mm, let us say, mm, uh, we can also say, uh, Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi took over the Prime Ministership from Dr. Manmohan Singh. Okay. So, someone takes over the, the so and so takes over the directorship from someone else, means okay. stepping into the shoes of someone. Okay. So, okay. That is another example. Learners, let us understand what a phrasal verb is. It need not give the same meaning of the stem, that the root verb. Suppose, take. Take is physically you pick up something. Yes. Take away is not always the same. So, what is the take away from the class? What is the take away from this pandemic? One word, how one word can mean different uh, uh, meanings. Yeah, fine. Okay, learners, uh, uh, we are not going to do lot of activities with that. I am going to give you one word, one phrasal, one word which may form many phrasal verbs. Then you try, pick up the dictionary and consult it and do it as your task and we will see. The, here are the okay. words, uh, Yukta is going to read out for you. Okay, so here are some phrasal verbs with come, come over, 
come up, come along, come back, come off, come on, come over, come through. Fine. Uh, uh, the other two are come up, come up with. Okay. Learners, these are the words you watch it, then consult the dictionary. Yeah. So, we will stop there the phrasal verb. Let us move on to how Kuswan Singh had used in his description of the grandmother past perfect okay. to denote the distant past. So, I am going to read out some illustrative statements, descriptive statements which Kuswan Singh uses, writes in the story, the portrait of a lady. So, we will learn from that. This is just noticing the form. First statement, my grandmother was an old woman. She had been old and wrinkled for 20 years that I had known her. People said that she had once been young and pretty and had even had a husband, but that was hard to believe. Let us look at the sentence, Yukta. There are many places he has used had been, had had, had, had known. Yeah. This is past perfect we know, third plus the third form of the verb. So, why does he use this? It happened long, long ago. Okay. Now, he is a grown up man, 25 and above. He must have written at the age of 30s or even in 40s, we do not know. Yes. Uh, but he was describing the di an events which took place in the distant past. So, we use that. The second statement Kusun Singh makes in the story is, when we both had finished, we would walk back together. Yukta, learners, when we both had finished, finished. we would walk together. So, okay. walking happened first or finishing the work happened first? Finishing the work. Okay. So, learners, the, for the earlier action in the past, we used past perfect, had finished, yes. then we would walk together. Yes. So, they started walking after having finished the walk. Come on. Then, the same way, next statement. When I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught me. When okay. I came back, she would ask me, there are three actions. Yes. I came back, she, she was asked asking me. about what? What the teacher had, had taught. taught. So, when I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught us. Which was the first action? Came back. No. When I came back, she would ask me what the teacher had taught. So, he comes back up after having been taught. Ah, okay, okay. So, what the teaching was the first action. Yes. For the earlier action in the past, we use past perfect. Yes. Okay. Then, it was the first time since I had known her that she did not pray. It was the first time I had known her had that known. she did not pray. So, that knowing is she had not prayed, yes. then he came to know of it. Next, the sun was setting and had lit her room and the veranda with golden light. So, sun was setting, setting and already it had lit the room golden light. Come on. Now, what do the past perfect verb forms denote here? They all refer to events in the past and an earlier event before an event. Mm -hmm. Some of them, he said he, she had been old, for, wrinkled for 20 years, but then now he see her as very old, lay, wrinkled, but she had been wrinkled for the, the previous action. Yes. Come on. So, read the following sentences. Come on, here are some sentences to notice the form. Come on, Yukta. First sentence, I had been in my primary school 10 years ago. So, when was it? 10 years Long ago. Long back, yes. after that many events took place. Had been in the school. Yeah, then? Second, it had been a memorable experience during that period. Okay, it had been. Again, distant past. Yes. Yeah. We had had good teachers who would take care of us. Okay. They took care of us, but they had, you, you had, had, had. Look at it. The same verb used as past and past perfect. Mm -hmm. Third form of the verb is had yeah. and past also had. So, had, had. had. Very, very, very interesting usage. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Okay. Fourth sentence. My grandfather had visited my school many time and would meet my teachers. Okay. He had visited many a time in the distant past and, and would meet him. Yes. Come on, learners, some task for you. When we had both finished our work, we would walk back together. Meaning, we have discussed this. 
had finished the work first then walked and together. then walked together so there are two actions learners the earlier action you use past perfect the later action you use past yes when i came back she would ask me what the teacher had taught, taught me. me so teaching took place first then later two actions okay. so i'm going to ask you to make two uh, sentences at least based on this understanding of past perfect and past together yeah okay so one would me uh, when i had reached the station the train has already left no you are making two 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 you two actions you are doing okay so train had already left then you yes. reached yes so say it when, when i reached, reached the, the sta station mm. the train had already left. left learners there are two actions the earlier action in the past one so both actions took place in the past then okay. next statement mm. when the teacher entered the classroom the student had been quiet had become yeah had been quiet had become yes. silent yeah quiet yes. so the teacher entered on seeing him entering they had already become quiet become so quiet. learners what we need to understand in order to describe the distant past events past perfect if there are two events the earlier one is in past perfect the later one is in past come on okay. learners uh, thank you yukta and the learners there uh, let me ask you to go through the lesson again and do the activities learners let me also inform you let me also tell you here means inform you <laughs> that that the each lesson has lot of qr code activities you may decode the qr code of your lesson by uh, any mobile or any uh, gadget then you will see lot of activities please try to do them they are very informal and very uh, simple you need not have to be very serious doing it casually do it no. come on let me stop there before we thank you uh, yukta and the learners there let me give you a writing task we have seen kuswant singh describing his grandmother very lucidly very you know, very nice images he uses <laughs> mountain the expanse of serenity peace but at the same time depicting describing her as a real person yes so he leaves he leaves to us to decide upon uh, right or wrong thing uh, her, her many of her qualities the same way learners pick up either your grandfather or grandmother write a page two three paragraphs and re revisit them and improve it if okay. will you do it uh, yes. and if any any person any elderly person in one neighborhood okay. so in order to write that this is process we have to undergo to do a good write up we call mm -hmm. it process approach to writing learners here are the steps which appears on your screen first is jot down the points then make an outline jot down the point means oh my grandmother what are her qualities how she appeared we put down then make an outline what i will write first mm -hmm. what what will what will go next then write your first draft revise it correct it and finalize it this is your okay. homework or school work whatever work please learners do it thank you very much learners there for uh, having be, been part of this uh, class part 1 parts 1 and 2 thank you yukta thank we'll you so meet much. in the next lesson next time thank you thank very you much thank you so much everyone take care